Yo, 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 this is Graphic Films. DJ Banger presents to you yeah. the fucking Next in Line Worldwide Podcast. It's finally here. Um, we finally got the opportunity to do our very first episode, and we got a very, very special guest um, on the platform today, on the podcast today, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 hey, Noah yeah, yeah. O, man. Noah O from Virginia, Cali. Um, just a fucking rap phenomenon. Just been going crazy, the grind crazy, the clothes crazy. And we got him in here to have this conversation to see how this shit going, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, got, yeah. you also got an album coming out called Trilipino. Yep, um, yep, yep. You know what I'm saying? Get the people an introduction. Oh, my bad. It's hot. I got to turn the AC on. Y'all go ahead. All right. <laughs> I'm going to wait till you sit down. Are you gonna add um like sound effects, clapping and all that? Yeah. Hell yeah, we're not. You know you the yeah, DJ, yeah, you a yeah, gunshot. Yeah. <laughs> well, but you got, you got the, the crazy soundboard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, there we go. What's up, Noah man? Chilling, chilling. Working on this album. So yeah, man. So tell us. I, I know it, it, it may be seem, seem biased sometimes when I deal with artists or bring them on my platforms, podcasts, or whatever, because I be working hands on with a lot of shit. Like, I'm Java creator, director for Charge Up NTs. But it's not for me to tell y'all what he working on, how he working, when he dropping, what he doing, when new content dropping, you know what I'm saying? Um, but tell him what's going on, man. Yo, I got the uh, Chilipino album on the way. I've been working hard on that for a while now. So, just really being. You know, getting putting the finishing touches on that. Uh, been going crazy with the merch lately. Like this one of the hats we just dropped, the Richmond hat, but dropping sweats, uh, shorts, hats. It's got a lot of stuff in the works. But my main priority, uh, music wise, is uh, just finishing this album and uh, just getting the rollout right, mm -hmm. securing. You know, really building relationships, traveling, and uh, just trying to make sure I have the best releases possible. You know what I mean? I got you, man. Um, tell us a little of your background. Um, that's leading up, leading us up to the Trilipino album. So I'm a originally I'm from the Bay Area, from San Francisco. Um, uh, I grew up there as well as moved to Richmond, moved to Henrico mm -hmm. um, when I was in middle school. So you know, I call Richmond home. I call this area home, but also, you know, the Bay Area is my roots, so that, like, uh, that experience, you know, everything I went through out there. Got my uncle in here, you know. What's up, uncle? How you doing, man? Uh, my family, you know, the things they instilled in me prior to moving here is, like, a big, big basis of who I am. So that's really leads up to what the album's about. I'm, I'm a Filipino, so I really want to tell that story of, of what it was like, you know, for me to try to enter this music world as well as growing up there and here, you know, being Filipino. So I got you. Yeah. So so that's what's up, man. So you taking everything you pretty much putting it in the album and giving everybody exactly who you are, like no facade or nothing like that. You feel me? Yeah. Fucking nah. with that. Can't, like can't tell nobody else's uh story. I just gotta, you know, bro, give them me. You'll you'll be you'll if I tell you some of the stories of what some of these music artists did to put on the front for the type of person that they are or to keep up with what they rapping about in their music is the stories just go and go and go they don't never stop you know what i'm saying like yeah at one shoot i'm doing this guy just go to the store buy some fanner and styrofoam cups and put a fanner in a cup and you know what i'm saying like yeah this lean yeah uh. yeah we pulling up you know like <laughs> Man, nah, like, bro, man. like self worth is is overrated nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, definitely. I don't know. But nah, I got it. Um, you know, it's good that we got the internet. You got videos and things like that. But at the end of the day, at some point, I have to get out here in the street. I have to go perform. Mm -hmm. I have to talk to people face to face. So I always, uh. I always try to approach like music is is it's not for me. It's not a role or not a character, creative player. I didn't create myself like so. I just use the music to really reflect who I am or tell share my experiences, tell my story. So for sure, as long as you know, I, as long as I'm doing that, I'm gonna be good because anybody who's met me in real life and what you hear in the music is the same person. You know, I think I've definitely seen that at times or where people 
you know, they saying certain things in the, in their music, and then you got to get out here in the street. You got to get out here and perform. That's what people want to see. So it's like if you've created whatever you've created, whether it's like you got money or whether, you know, you got a lot of women or whether you're the biggest gangster or whatever, whatever you rap about, that's what people want to see. They want to see if the person they meet in real life lines up with what they've been listening to. And mm-hmm. that could either go good or it could go bad. You know? Depending on who you <laughs> yeah. are. Like, Depending on who, you, who you've created behind <clears throat> your music. But I just try to be true to myself. For sure. You know. Well, I've definitely watched you grow as an artist, right? And this is a question I had. I know a lot of people want to know. I mean, you're kind of known for your creative rollouts. Uh-huh. A lot of projects you've done from from the transition of things, being in the mixtape, hand-to-hand street game, to the now digital era. Yeah. So, I mean, I ain't gonna lie. I'm waiting to see what, what kind of rollout we got now. Like, yeah. we talking about somebody that rolled out with, with, uh, with merch out of this world. I mean... The vinyls, the right. pop up shops, the right. skull caps, the, right. I mean, the scully. I mean, the ski mask is, you know, a lot of different things I've seen you make popular, and you sell a lot of them. So, like, a lot of your fans probably want to know, like, so what, what's, what's coming out with this rollout? Man, I got Man, not to cut you off, but not to mention, even like before the merch was getting crazy, like bringing artists down, throwing shows, connecting dots, yeah. Sway Universe, fucking, and all of the other platforms that he's been on. And just his, his home following, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Like, that's worth more than anything. Being like, as a, as a business owner, being able to sell a $50 product to a thousand people. You know what I'm saying, and them, th- them thousand people come back consistently and, and purchase and purchase. Yeah. Like that alone in itself is, is what artists would shit grind for. Yeah, yeah. Outside of the fame, you know what I'm saying. Nah, I like that. Like I, <clears throat> I had um experience like growing up when you talked about like how to how I transitioned from mixtapes to to rolling out my own albums. Like I grew up, I started off doing like street team work like working under DJs, under street teams, and they taught me how to how to get out here and generate attention. And, and so I watched when, you know, I watched what the record labels do. Like what does a record label do to break a new artist? You know, they what do they do? They take this artist, whenever they would come to Richmond, they would take them, you know, take them to the either like the hood or a community event or they take them to like the club and walk them around and then they would take them to the radio station like let the people touch them and and get a sense of who they are because we didn't when i was first starting as a kid there was no internet so people had to see you face to face and that's what they would do with the artists like they would take them around then um you know on top of that after they would take them around they would have us you know handing out their flyers telling their story for them so it's like i just and putting up posters, I just watched what I seen work for people around me, and it was like that that grassroots campaign, and it's the same thing, really, like that political people do when when there's a new politician that's running for office. The first thing they do is like they go door to door, mm-hmm. and they door door drop door. off yeah. little pamphlets, and then they go to the community groups and speak to people or introduce themselves, letting them know like. All right, the things that y'all are passionate about, the issues that you care about, I care about them too. So you should let me represent you. You know what I mean? So it's it's really no different from a rapper. If you look at it like an artist gets out there, if you you know rap about certain things, you try to connect with those people and let them know like you know I'm the same as you. So that's why you should get behind me. So I just like I always try to implement that like. And that starts at home first. Like I've seen artists where, you know, they they may not have had to start out from the ground up, but they might get a deal. And this is not this is just in general. Like if you are an artist and you just go from nobody knowing you to getting a record deal and that record label is doing all the work for you and they're the one generating the awareness. When you lose that deal, you don't know how to go backwards, you know, reverse engineer that process. And go backwards and, and replicate those steps for your next project. It looks like lying you know? on a job application. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, yeah. a lot of us would do that. We yeah, because we all hungry. Yeah. We want to get there, but like you said, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, your resume, is the best teacher. You know what I'm saying? Like exactly. At some point, like you said, if you don't know how to cook nothing, but you know how to tell everybody how to do something, when they tell you to go in the kitchen to cook something, you can come up with. <laughs> Yeah. It's something that's not what nobody ordered. <laughs> nah, nah. Yeah, and like you said, so, like you, 
you're gonna get found out sooner or later. You feel right. me? Like like I can lead you to the water, but I can't make you drink it tight. Like, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. I can show you your street team, showing you how to move and connect with these people. You know what I'm saying? I just, oh, I don't like talking to people. I'm a gangster. Nah, I, I don't because I mean <laughs> I, I do. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day. Like, I don't look at people, whether it's, like, people following me or people streaming. I don't look at it like it's, it's numbers. Mm -hmm. I know that each one of these, behind every number, every follower is a real person. And it's something about them or something I'm doing that made them connect with me. Mm -hmm. So it's like, to me, it's not like I just need to get a bunch of followers or a bunch of streams because I need to figure out what is it that I'm doing that's connecting with them. And then continue to do more of it you know what i mean to, to, and build upon it but for sure yeah but, yeah what's next i just got i got a lot of just like a lot of dope um uh, like merch and and different things that i'm looking at putting with this album that'll help tell that story too and that's like you know sometimes like well oh, that's what i try to make sure i do that the things that i'm releasing like whether it's clothes it's consistent with who I am. You know what I mean? Like, it wouldn't make sense. Yeah, if I put out a hat and it's like each one of the, these hats spell out something that that means something or is a part of my story, I wouldn't put like, you know what I'm yeah, saying? A pistol yeah. on it or something. If yeah. I'm not out here trying to promote that, yeah. it's like I try to make sure that whether it's clothes or the music, it all is consistent with um, like who I am. You know what I mean? And it so, makes sense. Like, it ain't just anything. Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes, like, bro, like, we'll see stuff that work for other people, but it might not work for you and your brand. You know what I'm saying? Like, it might be something good they're doing, but, like, I've just learned that over the years. We'll work for the next person. Yeah, yeah, some may work for me, but if it's not, if it don't line up with who I am, like, you know what I mean? It's, it, 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 for sure, for sure. yeah. But yeah, what's up, banger man? Hey, Welcome to the bro. set, man. Yeah, on the gang, yeah, man. man. What's yeah, up, man? man? We here, yeah. man. The first episode, the next one, sure. man. You know what I'm saying? Banger man, give them, give them some of your background story. Tell them, you know what I'm saying? What's going on? What you got going on? What you got coming, bro? Oh man, everything, Chico, and everything in it. Here <laughs> we the world. I got you, man. You know, I mean, we we constantly on uh, building. Uh, you know, everybody know me. I'm, you know, I have like a d d d d d d d d. You know? <laughs> so it's like I'm always ready to start something. Um, uh, like even if I can't like start it, you know, like if I could just start the idea and come mm -hmm. back and visit it later and play whatever position I need to play in mm -hmm. that position, I'm cool with that. Because mm -hmm. you know, like I said, my mind be all over the place. Um, waiting for these venues to open back up. Um, shit, look like they about to close back down. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, so it's like, yeah. hey, the I, pandemic I ain't over. Going, we thought we was just getting ready to jump off stages and stuff, but. You know, I'm getting in shape too late, I guess. I don't know. I might have to just get big. <laughs> <Postpone. right? laughs> we might have to quarantine again. <laughs> Postpone that, get a yeah. gym in the crib. <laughs> but like, hey, we, we focus on the next line podcast on um, getting the world a lot of insight on all these artists, why they need to be following them, why they need to be buying their merch, mm -hmm. you know, why they buy your favorite artists, need to add a couple to the list. Mm -hmm. So I'm here for that. For sure. You know. So man, let's go back to the basis of what we saying when you was like uh you don't want um, you're not necessarily chasing a, a million followers. You're chasing the followers that that mean something to you and that connect with you. Yeah. How you feel about the baby being dropped off of all of these projects, bro? Yeah, all these I festivals. I didn't even know. So what, what happened? Like, so, yeah. Um. So at um. At the at the Rolling Loud concert when he was on stage, mm -hmm. he fucking said some negative about the. Gay people and yeah, like a whole I mean, bunch of shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Get a big conversation with because mm. <laughs> um, you know the baby's an artist that you know uh, that I've worked with before on this on his mission. We started out with Baby G's name, yeah. the baby. Shout out to him, the whole fam out there in uh, Charlotte. Um, to be honest, even just to speak for him, I mean, what he said, we probably could play the audio, but we're gonna paraphrase. We probably get removed if we actually play the audio yeah, at this yeah. point. Is but it's like what he said. He said, uh, put your lights up for like girls if you if you put you smell like water. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then uh put 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 your uh, phone up and lights up if you don't have HIV and AIDS. Do doom doom. He said if you're not a nigga in a car sucking another nigga dick, put your put your hands up. I mean, you know, put the lights up. Do do doom doom doom. Now what he said, could they have been offensive to certain people? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. But to be honest, to me, you know, I don't feel like 
that was not as bad as he said. Like, yeah, yeah. Now, if he said, if every nigga suck a dick in a car, die from AIDS, yeah, no, no, that would have been offensive. No, no. Like, I think, if, yeah. if you kill a motherfucker in this bitch right now, for whatever, whatever. See, now I can take those words by your Yeah, bro, that's bad. too much. Yeah, yeah. But what he said, if you stopped each one and, and set them separately, it wouldn't have been a situation. Yeah, you know? yeah, I mean, yeah, It was a situation because you had a gay performer perform earlier. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. You know, on top of, you had another performer that you have a riff with that is with a guy that had a domestic issue. Oh, with. yeah, yeah, you yeah. You see what I'm saying? So when you do these things, you add, you disrespect them. And like, like I was talking to people today earlier, and it's like, I didn't even know it was a plus now. Is an LG Q yeah. like y'all doing too much, bro? I, mean, I, I think, think y'all I think like, like, like NWA, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Wu Tang. Y'all need to listen to hip hop. Like, bro, was, can we keep us? That's why I said gay people. Why y'all didn't plus? know what the fuck to say? Like, yeah, so now if you don't nah, see the plus, well, am well. I disrespecting? If I don't add the plus, or if I don't actually say it right, that's like a bad. I just think I like, think we're in a time where you know, everything, especially the bigger your your platform is, the more people, you know, you got the spotlight on you. And, and that just shows, like, the baby, he one of the biggest artists out here. After you sell a certain amount of records, it's bigger than hip-hop, it's bigger than whatever your city or, you know, the hood or this place. So, and you want my personal opinion, that's like it. Like, with these, with these platforms, it come a lot of responsibility not saying he was being irresponsible. I'm just like the more, the more these people gonna try to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you gotta watch what you say. I've even <coughs> run into that. I just try to be real measured with my words. Did mm-hmm. he offend me? Nah, but he won't. You know. Yeah. But I'm I'm a person that don't really get offended yeah, too and, and they, much easy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Unless you do grow, something to disrespect me, then. And we you know also grow with if it don't apply, let it fly. That's what I mean. If it don't so apply like, to me, so know, I'm just but, like. What I also took out of this situation, to be honest, they have a little teacher moment real quick, is the powers that be. And when I say the powers that be, meaning you might not have been offended, or you might not have been offended, or your fans might not have actually been offended, but the person that's helping fund this situation got offended. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know we're, in a, we're in a real sensitive, we're, we're we're in in a real sensitive of, time, too, and, man. And, and, you know what I mean? When it way, comes to- it's definitely way deeper than the fans, for sure. Yeah. Um, it's, it's based on the opinions of the people that's throwing these festivals. And, yeah. You know what I'm saying? If they see it as an opportunity to blackball you and make money from it, then that's what they're going to do. And, mm-hmm. I, and I think that's say, what they're doing. To be honest. But it's even bigger than just the festivals. Is is. You know, you got corporate sponsors mm-hmm. who behind, who, and I'm who just giving honest, advertising, also, it's media, you, you feel me? It's the Once media. they start calling, yeah, we're going to have to drop out. Um, If y'all not doing nothing about the baby, da, da, yeah. then yeah. they whole festival yeah. fucked up, so they got to let you go. Like, yeah. yeah, it's crazy. And it all goes back to, like, uh, it goes back to even to, like, some of us had trapping beginnings where, like, you know, I was I, I was raised early with the, the, the whole knowledge of everybody money spend the same, bro. Mm-hmm. You know, like the only money we care, only color we care about is green. Mm-hmm. And I don't care what, I don't care if this dog came and gave me this five or ten dollars. We mm-hmm. coming to take this five or ten dollars. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, a lot of these people that's in positions might not share the same beliefs or things mm-hmm. you had, yeah, whether it's yeah. religion, whether it's politics, whether whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, so it's like I kind of feel both sides of the fence, meaning. Because we're not here for that. We didn't pay you for that, for your opinion about mm. how you feel about that. We paid you to play these songs that you... Just do your shit? Yeah. So now it's like, I kind of mm. understand what Chris Brown... Like, some people like, why Chris Brown say that? But see, then, Chris Brown, somebody that's been in the game a long time, too, that knows. Mm. You can't just always say how you feel. Mm-hmm. It's not for you. They didn't pay you to say how you feel. Mm. It's almost kind of like going to the whole shut up and play ball type mm. of situation. Which, yeah. But, like he said, also, like, what comes with great... Uh, power. power is responsibility mm-hmm. and you do have a responsibility sometimes you do have to speak up for mm-hmm. these people that can't speak up they can't be heard mm-hmm. yeah, so it yeah. does take a LeBron or a Kaepernick to sit there and say look we're sick of it though mm-hmm. we don't mind all of us come together and pay y'all this money to come do this when we leave everybody's enemies they could be neighbors and they yeah. hate each other but they all go there to this football on station and I learned that going to Cleveland one time mm-hmm. we was on tour we ended up going to the Cleveland thing but at the time we was going to the um, Rock and Roll Museum oh yeah yeah we the pictures from that. at a football game at the yeah. same time so we moved it was the weirdest experience because you seeing white Cleveland fans black Cleveland fans and I, now when I say white Cleveland fans I'm talking about good white people uh, uh, fans but you're also seeing the racist ones mm-hmm. you're seeing the black ones you're seeing the black ones man look at them saying racist slurs to other religions but guess what they all got on orange and brown mm-hmm. man orange and brown like I'm just saying like the 
You see what I'm saying? Y'all all wearing this to go to this place to root for the same losing team too, by the way. <laughs> like, yeah. y'all all coming to take the L. But it's just like, if y'all can't pay together to make that happen for that cause, why can't y'all live like that every day? You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And But now we can always point the finger at somebody that's like, they speak how they feel about it. Which, like I said, at the end of the day, now if that was his rap song, if that was his concert that he funded and he did himself, yeah, he can say whatever he want to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not saying I'm, I'm not rocking on either side because I, you know, I'm a very outspoken person. I like to speak how I feel, mm-hmm. yeah. but I also understand sometimes ain't time, place for that. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. like I'm kind of even going to a funeral. This man owe you a hundred dollars, but they actually just speak some words. He's like, yeah, yeah, he did die in the house fire, saving twenty kittens and little four toddlers, but. That nigga still owe me a hundred dollars though. Where my money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just yeah, like, yeah. like, what the fuck? Like, yo, why you say that, bro? Like, I want my money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like we get it, but yeah, nah, just ain't it. sometimes and ask for that, bro. You ain't get respect this man, family. Yeah, bro. That, that, that'd be long story short, bro. That's hey, man, man, I'm I don't trying know to get that money from the family. Y'all responsible. It's y'all debt now. Hey, man, I don't <laughs> know about y'all, but you got that check. <laughs> Look, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I go on Instagram right now, bro, I see. Naked females. If I if I go on fucking Snapchat, it's naked females promoting. Yep. If I go on Twitter, this is, Twitter is is Twitter uncensored. Is it's just yeah, porn. Like, you yeah. know what I'm hey, saying? Twitter is terrible. We can't open Twitter. Hey, <laughs> nah, was, I, I've seen <laughs> stuff on Twitter. I was like, man, bro, it's bro, it legit. Know. Just be porn. You can't like, open it up. I opened up a compad the other day. I'm eating. And you know, like yeah. there's like a little open thing. So yeah, it's like, what the fuck? like straight pussy open. Just like, oh, goodness, like. <laughs> <laughs> like do y'all y'all think we going y'all think it's this generation that's being raised or are we going through an epidemic where it's like females don't want to be females they just want to lay they just want to make money the way they're making it like it's sex slaves always been around you know what i'm saying sex workers always been around this yeah. has been since the beginning of time yeah. like is it since pimp, since pimp, yeah since like pimp. so is it is it more of being on the forefront now versus when it back then it was more hidden like you knew but I mean, it wasn't yeah, just we like, could definitely or is it just you know, been, the, I, the internet yeah I, I think it's twofold like with the internet it's internet just we can see everything. anything mm-hmm. and you can make money doing anything so mm-hmm. I think it's definitely people that you know financially they like man I gotta get it how I live so I'm gonna yeah. get this money but mm-hmm. then it's like you know, I'm the type, if that's what people choose to do for work and that's how they, you know, then that that's on them. I definitely don't, you know, if people are getting exploited or sex trafficked. That's an, another thing. Yeah, yeah. But do I think it's more? Like, it's it's hard to tell because they didn't have the internet back in the day. When, when he tells me stories about things that his generation and my mom and dad were into, They've lived a, a different life than I lived, but it was no internet. Mm-hmm. You know, if you, you know what I mean. Like yeah, if you look at sure. the murder rate I during was, the eighties, can you imagine if you know when people when you know even in Richmond? I mean, I was yeah, I was, was born in the time when there, if there was, was phones in the nineties and the eighties recording yeah. everything. Man, we would see all types of crazy stuff. Man, we might not. Even we had to wait it. for the news. Honestly, like, yeah, we never like I was born in a time it. when there wasn't internet. You know what I'm saying? Like so, I went to school where we didn't have internet. I had phones where like. To have internet access, you would have to pay like a hundred extra dollars. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Or like, a little uh, America Online thing. Yeah, the yeah. yeah. AOL jokes, yeah. dial up internet <laughs> yeah. and shit. What? Like I'm, I was, I was kind of, I was in that era, so I understand yeah. completely. Like everything just enhanced to the ten. Like, yeah. you, like the visibility. I say yeah. the visibility is enhanced because if you look at the actual numbers, like. Like I look at it, I always think of it when it comes to crime, right? But when we look at the actual numbers, like man, it was way more people getting murdered. If you look at the exactly. statistics, but you didn't see it. Exactly. You know, now we anytime something happens, everybody knows about it everywhere. And, and you know I, what I mean? And that, and that goes to me hand in hand, even with like the police brutality. You understand? Like to me, people they ain't care about that. Say Rodney King. That's yeah, because somebody recorded. Somebody recorded. It. You know how much that that tape had to do a minister of society tour run. Yeah. For it to even get that much focus on this is what happened at this yeah. particular situation. And you see where it happened that it was on a broad it's like on happened on Chip Yeah, yeah. And it's stopping traffic. Mm-hmm. People ain't got no choice. Like this is like if that happened right now. Everybody like, oh, what mm-hmm. hold up, excuse me. What's going on? And that's another thing too we need to talk about. People need to mind their own business. Yeah. Definitely mind the business that pays <laughs> certain situations. But sometimes I, I mean I don't want to say it like that because that's because that was good that they didn't mind their business in these situations because they did bring light to it. 
in that particular situation. But also that too, though, we, we, that's another topic for another time, mm -hmm. you know. But I got you. But I'm just saying, like, like you're saying, bringing light to a lot of things that we never seen all these times, like, like yeah. even homosexuality. It's been happening since the seventies, the sixties, the fifties, the Roman times. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was a reason why it wasn't talked about. And we're not gonna go that deep on this podcast either because we don't want to get an axe already. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But when there's more something, get this shit blocked. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there's more something. Y'all can upload shit. You know, and, and, and it's like, and I understand people. Like a lot of people have different thoughts about it because, like, see, a lot of us are parents that we was raised for over years and years of how to raise to reproduce. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna speak on it like that from a perspective, like a, a professional perspective. You know, I don't, I don't have no problem with nobody doing what they do. Mm -hmm. But we was raised, like you said, like all those times. So it had to be a certain type of respect. If our parents and all that back then, if they did it, is it wasn't because they didn't want to do it because they were still doing it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, just like smoking weed or drinking underage. We, you know, what I'm saying like mm -hmm. some people, but it's just like you know, you wasn't supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. It's, it's a reason for that. So now they just making it like that's all cool. So now it's like okay, so it's okay, it's okay for my son to take my gun to school too, then right? Mm -hmm. And it's okay for them to drink liquor with me too, right? And roll my blunts too, by the way. Like why not help him out? How about he? I show him how to weigh it and everything. Go ahead gotta, and OD if you want to. He got yeah. Why not? Hey, get on the opiates, ain't that right? They, I give it to us, don't I? You know what I mean? They give you, give your kids the stuff to stay up and. And watch TV for thousands of hours at a time because you got to think about that too. Yeah. When they're giving them Ritalin, they give them ADD medicines and stuff like that, like they tried to do with me when I was young. But that's what they would do, make you focus. Mm -hmm. And they'll help me be one of the best DJs out here. But mm -hmm. I'm just saying, like, a kid. So now what are they they're trying to do? Y'all don't train them to go out and, and be active. Uh, it's our job as parents, right, to make sure our kids stay active so they don't become obese. Like, now we're going to a whole other level of things, right? Mm -hmm. But not only these things about their health that we got to worry about. Now we have to worry about him chasing it. You know, we don't know. Too much. You know, and it's like, so now what are we doing as parents? Y'all take, to me, they just remembering us even as parents. If I say don't do this in this house, but you can go to school, and they saying, your dad said don't do that, but you can do this at school. So if I tell them, oh, you know, candy, y'all can give candy when you go to school. Mm -hmm. Let's just be that simple about it. If I say my son is allergic to peanuts, y'all gonna tell me that because of what the book said, he's supposed to eat peanuts. But my son can die eating peanuts. Mm -hmm. And I guess what I also gotta pay for this EpiPen that costs a lot of money. <laughs> that just to leave with y'all, just in case y'all don't listen to me. Mm -hmm. You see oh, what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and it has to be there when your son starts school. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So it's just like it's a lot of questions. Well, it's not even a lot of questions. I think there's a lot of people that gotta have conversations with yourselves in the mirror. And understand what you stand for. Yeah, and that's what I was gonna say. How you're gonna raise your situation. Yeah, and that's how yeah. we gotta stand as I feel like moving as a minority, as people in general. Yeah. But definitely us because I feel like a lot of stuff you push to us, like the music. Who who wanna hear you ride with your daughter? I don't have a daughter, but I got boys, but still, I don't even want my daughter, my son to idolize these young girls like that. Why is this on the radio? This should be XM radio. Yeah, nah, nah. Nah, for sure. They are getting crazy. Nah, crazy I think about that all the time, like and that's where I never tell, you know, an artist, it's art, you know what I mean? Hip hop mm -hmm. is art. But I definitely think it's a time. Like you said earlier, it's a time and a place. There was a time, you know, when I was little, you couldn't hear certain types of records to after a certain hour. Or mm -hmm. they might not got on, on the radio, period. period. You would hear certain music in the club, which was club music. Mm -hmm. You would hear street music in the streets if it was oh. too gangster. And then you would hear radio records. Yep, Tony Braxton. Oh, yeah. you know what I mean. But even the hip hop, even the yeah. hip hop, like for Biggie, yep. I, if you like study hip hop, uh, like Puff would say, you know that's why he was incorporating them R and B samples into Biggie's to records play. to get radio play. Yep. But now it doesn't matter. Nope. It don't matter if you got a record talking about blowing somebody head off, uh, you know whatever sexual act. It could all be a radio record. Uh -huh. So it's just a new time when where it because really. What changed it is, or it probably never changed, but what changes, or what, what matters the most to radio is numbers. If you were, if your record is getting a lot of plays, and then still within reason, if a program director, music director, whoever picks your record, because you got artists now where, you know, they might have one of the biggest records on the internet, but you'll still never hear it on the radio. Exactly. So I guess there's still somewhat of a format. But we just in a different time because uh, still at the end of the day, like the record, labels really have a big 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Those records you will hear on the radio nine times out of ten is going to be somebody who signed a major label. So we just we just in a, a new time. But the good thing is, like you mentioned this earlier, like you have things you're working on to build y'all's brands. You know, graphic films, uh, dump off radio, dump off DJs. Now next in line podcast. We're in a time where you know we can have our own brands, our own movements, and if we we it's just up to us depending on the money or how we do it, where we can generate a following. Mm-hmm. You can generate a following, and that's always been my, my, well, not always. It was a certain point I started moving with that mindset. Mm-hmm. Like, man, I'm not getting a record deal. If I was going to get a record deal, I would have been got a record deal. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, nobody has helped make that happen, so what can I do? And it was looking at cats like, you know, of course, growing up in the Bay Area, seeing how they move, um, growing up in the South as well, seeing how certain people that I looked up to moved and, and got it on their own. And then even like a big thing I know that changed, it was, of course, looking at Nipsey. And then even over the last few years, and I tell F this, I was like, man, seeing Nicholas F and him with the dude, Lil Ugly Man, that I went to their shows and, and then the rock and punk shows in Richmond and seeing the, the cult following these people had. And I was like, you know what? This is real. This is genuine. If you had a rock show and a punk show in Richmond and there's a hundred people there and they're all buying, man, it blew my mind one day I was at a rock show and these people were buying shirts, but they was buying matchbooks. Yeah. Anything that had these people's logo or band name on it, they really? was buying it. Yeah. And I was like, it felt different. And I noticed it. I had performed, I had been on TV at this point and I had performed in big clubs in front of people. But then when I would leave, those people weren't there to see me. They weren't my fans. When I was at these smaller venues, these people were there because they were there for that band or that group or that yeah. artist. And that's different. And I, it just felt so different. I was like, you know what? That's the type of career I want to have. If I could do 100 shows with 100 people who are spending, you know, not only they spent $10, 15 $20 to get in, but now they're buying a shirt. You know, these are real people who want to see me do well and but continue. I, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I also want to speak on, and, and this is why I probably like that was people, big. Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of people probably already be asking like, I know all this big of an artist, his song. Well, he do we have his songs on radio, but you know what I'm saying? As far as like in that area, every area has a trap area. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And another area, and mm-hmm. they yeah, have different yeah, area yeah. genres of music. All them genres is doing different. Just one one genre stays in the club every week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And one genre stays in these different venues every weekend. That's the only difference. But what I realized is, see, the difference is because like a lot of people ask me how I transitioned from basically just being a, like a trap DJ or street DJ to, like you said, doing headlining with a with an artist that's a, a hip hop artist and rock punk. Events, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. break it down. Yeah. Even then, this uh, artist like you, what I can speak for is like when the people grow and they 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 grow into you, yeah. Like Nicholas F is an artist that's rapped about his own personal struggles, like seriously, yeah. like. Yeah. And, I, and I'm giving an example, but there's not never nothing he said, but just saying like maybe I used to pee in the bed when I was young, but I mm-hmm. peed in the bed because of this or that. Yeah, yeah. But he was able to say it real artistically. Uh huh. It's a hundred people all over the world, a thousand people all over the world, like, yo. I feel that same way, right? I bet you want to tell y'all, I want just a pee-pee dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> See, yeah, he sure. feels me. Like, bro, yeah, it yeah. happened from some type of trauma, but what people don't realize, we grew up where people made fun of things they didn't understand, period. Yeah. Or why you the way you are, or how you became how you are. Mm-hmm. And what I've noticed is different from the artists that sell out events of cult followers and have real core fans is people that know that these people has not sold out. Mm-hmm. They're being true to who they sell. They're showing the public, I'm growing in front of y'all. Yeah. Like I'm like a little uh, uh, chia pet. Yeah, y'all yeah. watering me and the more y'all watering me, the more I get back to y'all. And it's a lot of Man, artists that's that is dope. like that's, that's, a dope that's way in the it. majors. Yeah. But it's, it's very, very little. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because somebody like the artists I know, if we said something, to be honest, we wouldn't probably apologize about it. First of all, because either we would have thought about it before we said it. So mm-hmm. our crew of people that support us and here to see us, we don't want to say nothing that make you feel some type of way. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because like you said, I've been on tour and sort out every piece of merch I done had. Mm-hmm. My, like, half of the things, my name, what do you know that? This is all from fans. Mm-hmm. That is his man. That's him. That's him. Buy, what, what, what can I buy something to support you because we appreciate yeah, yeah. you? They want, and to be honest, they want like to a lot of places you come from, people don't want to see you there anyway on that stage. So no. they don't want to bad nothing. I, I broke in here in the first place. 
I yeah. snuck in here. I snuck all 20 of us in here today. We mm -hmm. wasn't buying your ticket, nigga. We just mm -hmm. wanted to see see you. Just in case you slip and drop your chain so we could take it. And mm -hmm. then put it on Instagram and I can go viral. And it's me, me, yeah. me. These fans that these people have built, like I said, has grown with people. They're yeah. not just coming in right where they have a chain on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, like, let me see my dog right here. This is dying. He's blinking. I watched him put in work. Mm -hmm. Like, so when you see that chain, that's a trophy. Mm -hmm. That yeah. means, like, yeah. that's how much work. Man, he could have been got that chain. Mm -hmm. I just happen to have enough there right now. I feel like, okay, I want to get it right now and still be able to do everything else I want to do. Got these shows going. I got his house. I got this and everything. So I'm going to get this little chain. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not saying it's a little chain. I ain't a degrading, man. Mm -hmm. But nah, he can say, I'm going to get my chain now because I don't care about that. Yeah, that is a yeah. walk. In, and there's a lot of artists in our city that is like, well, I ain't going to just say our city. There's a lot of artists in, in the industry that I feel like should be getting a lot of credit too. They don't chase these fans. To me, the only one they bigger, the biggest that I see represent the type of people that I like and I appreciate is like J. Cole. Mm -hmm. That man sure. came in from like, it was like, no, I ain't shooting nobody around nobody. Or the Kendricks. I, I mean, I was yeah. around people that did this. That's not my life. And I'm going to stick to who I am. So fans love that we ain't worried about him coming out with another album for four years because he's building his content. We know when he mm -hmm. gives it to us, he's going to open our eyes. And his something. album going to last us that long just because it's so good. That's all yeah. I can like, say. Like on my it. behalf, I can say like, like for my core, my core supporters and fans, like bro, it's it's crazy to be a videographer and like go to different venues, go to different wherever I go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I could be in Charlotte and I shot a video, and somebody would be like, "Oh, that's graphic. That's a dude that shoot videos in Richmond." You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'll that's go dope. in Petersburg and walking through the mall, somebody in t somebody that work in T-Mobile. I could be with my girl and my kids, and they is like, "Graphic, yo, yo, this is graphic. What's up?" Yeah. Boo, like there they go again. I'm like, damn. I like not not, not like damn. Like yeah. I'm like damn. I don't really be knowing these people. Exactly. So for me to be introverted and like the type of person mm -hmm. I am, I ain't really ready to approach or like you know what I'm saying. But the work I be you. feeling the love. No, that's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. I was about to say that's a tip like people the like we're not work, like you know I mean? man. You gotta you gotta think, man. Shooting somebody paying for a five hundred dollar video didn't give you a hundred dollar tip. It's like yo, we support you, we fuck with you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Or some after after shooting a gig or event, somebody stopping you outside a club talking to you for hours, like, damn, I didn't even know you were still in Richmond or you were still shooting, it's yeah. good to see you still working, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, people buy my personal my personal photos that I print out, people buy prints, my work is in, in people's houses, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm still getting paid from YouTube videos I didn't shot four or five years ago because they being monetized. Like, oh, yeah, even if it's every six months, every year, I get a hundred dollars from YouTube. Yeah. It's like, nah, yeah. it's unexpected. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> a, that's that, what they call it, fruits of your labor. Yeah, I just, you know? I, I just love putting in work, man, and, and building on what I already got. So it's like, when people see me get the red camera, it was like. We didn't. We never didn't expect you to grow, to yeah, keep growing. Yeah, we never expected yeah. you to. I, I got dribblies. We, you deserve yeah. this, bro. You grind your ass off. Like when I talk to people, they be like, "We real deal. Don't expect you to have no low rates, bro. Like you've been yeah. doing it for so long. Yeah. We don't come at you on some shit. Like I'm a new artist and I just want a video. They be like, "Well, I'll get left out. Um, of somebody choosing a video because." They know my price is probably crazy versus yeah. going with somebody else. They're like, oh, I can get them 300. We'd be good. Yeah. Or you want to go to graphic, you can need about seven, eight. You I mean, know what I'm saying? I mean, like, but you know how that goes. <laughs> if, it was, if it wasn't for that, it wouldn't be no Team Jordans. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 for <laughs> sure. <laughs> for sure. Like but so it's, it's, it's on, just on, amazing. Not to cut you off with Hold that being said, just... let's make sure y'all give it up for our sponsor. Make sure y'all follow this is Graphic Films. That yeah, man. In the next line podcast. Follow, follow us all, man. And like and set your reminder that I, I hit that in all YouTube videos. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we got to start including yeah. that now. But make so, sure you follow Charged Up Noah, man. You follow um, DJ yeah. Banger, man. We are. Um, came a long way in the music industry, film industry, DJ industry. We are pioneers of our own brands and entrepreneurs. You know what I'm saying? So if you ever like want to reach out, come on a show or build with any of us outside of the podcast, make sure you tap in, man. You know what I'm saying? Noah O always got merch. Bang always got merch. He always doing events. Me, I'm always on set at shoots. I got a store. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to fuck with us, just tap in, bro. It ain't that. It ain't hard. But just let it be genuine. Don't be on no goofy shit. Yeah, my, yeah. next I'm in line. Man. That was a commercial break with my bad. Like I thought about it was a, it was like a point where I, I I knew it was like a pivotal moment. Like I had a video. Like there was a time right I really wanted a record deal, but that's because I thought that that was the only way. Mm -hmm to validate what I was doing or even to um 
like make the money I you know what I mean to yeah, make money off my sense. my talent my career whatever so I, I thought like you know you rap you meet somebody they give you a deal and then you make money but what I noticed was like so I had been grinding dropping mixtapes right and I had a song called I got it on one of the mixtapes the mm-hmm. song I got it I copied what I seen the labels do I just I noticed like I put out the mixtape people kept coming back to me like <clears throat> Yo, this one song, this one song, this one song. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna push that song. I'm gonna push this song. Every mm-hmm. DJ, I'm not sending them two, three songs. I'm just giving them the one song, the one song. I did that for like a year. And then after about a year, we shot a video. And the video got on MTV. So when that happened, like, I started like, I, I had meetings. I was like with uh, A&R, things like that. And more people knew who I was. But then I noticed, like, I, I didn't have a strategy in place. So what happened is the song took off. It got me known, like, regionally. It got me seen nationwide or even worldwide. Mm-hmm. But I didn't have, like, a next, something next. next thing, like a set up thing. Yes, yeah, it was supposed to, you know, and that, so I didn't mm-hmm. fundamentally understand, all right, well, what's next? I didn't understand that. But what blew me was, like, I got all this attention, meetings, whatever, shows, whatever came from it. But after that died off, a lot of them people disappeared. That's what they do. They they just it's it, just for the clout at the moment. Well, yeah, because right right that's like how can I make a million dollars? Yeah, right I now? didn't have you know, it might have been that would be the equivalent, even though I was independent, of having like a somewhat of a hit record. So I was like, after it died off, I didn't know how to deal with it. So mentally, it messed with me. And then, of course, I went through the motion. Oh, man, people fake, this, this, and that. Mm-hmm. This game is messed up. But it wasn't that. It was just that that's the nature of this thing. It's you know? a simple mental business. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's yeah. like a way, can, you know, but it's like with anything. It's like if you a team, mm-hmm. you're a, you a ball player in your team, you just took your team to the championship, and then you got to go, what happens? You got to go right after that and get prepared for the next season. Exactly. I wasn't ready. Yeah. And I had to really be honest with myself because I had a meeting with an A&R. He asked me, like, what's your plan? I didn't know what to tell him. Because yeah. I thought what happens is you get popular, you get hot, and then you go to them, and then they give you the plan. Yeah. Nah, they people just, and they're in business. So at least, you know, at least if they're going to invest money or put their machine behind you, they want to hear your vision. Mm-hmm. I didn't have no vision. I just thought that what it took was you get hot, and then they put, and then they give you a bunch of money yeah. and keep it going for you. No, mm-hmm. so now what it forced me to do was go back to the drawing board. So I went from having like a song that was playing in the club, playing in the radio, playing on TV, and then what I did was I went back into the, the drawing board and I created Monument Avenue, mm-hmm. which is a whole different Correct. sound. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because I was like, no, nah, like I get it. It's like the light bulb click. Mm-hmm. I get it. I can't fast forward this. I gotta go back and now build a real fan base. A you gotta real get everything following. right. You gotta do it. You know right what I mean? Way. So now when you have a popular record, you have something to fall back on. And you know, that's what I really for anybody who's been watching me, anybody just seeing this for the first time, that's really what I consider was my beginning when I dropped Monument Avenue, which was now seven years ago. But really I had mixed taste out yeah. before that. I still been right. Yeah. But that was the moment where I was like, this how I gotta move moving forward. So that next time, you know, whatever it is, whether it's a big appearance or I drop a big song, I know how I know the machine, the mechanics of how this game yeah. works. And now I'm at that point where, you know, I can I'm prepared, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's really what Chilipino represents. Well, I'm prepared. Now, I have records that'll play in the club. I have records that'll, you know, just real different uh, from what people may have been hearing from me over the last few projects. But my goal was to build a solid, you know, to build my brand, to build myself, to where if I'm ever in that position, nobody could take nothing away from me. Exactly. I could go back to my core following. So. You know, for any artist that's, that's seeing that, just like know that like nobody's gonna uh, figure out your process for you. So I feel grateful that it's not that I fell off. So if anybody looks at me like my career has been one like continuous incline going up, and that's what I always wanted. 
And it's like, it was a time where I was like, when people were like, who's the people I look up to? Really, I couldn't be mad because everybody that I respect or whose career I like to emulate, they had that same story, you know yeah. what I mean? So, I, and that's that's what I want more. That lets you know that you're moving in your purpose, man. Yeah, also, people yeah. don't know that like just because you meet somebody or you talk to them and you deal with them, shit don't happen the next day or the next week or the next next month. What you're doing is is planting a seed for this yeah. relationship and how you move forward with just a regular relationship. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Determines yeah. how we can do business together. Yeah, I was like, that's how that shit move. Kind of like what both y'all were saying It's like because what I heard in that. Also, and I'm pretty sure the fans heard it too, how you turn the L into a lesson, mm-hmm. yeah. to be honest, because at the end of the day, like you saying, like a lot of people come to you like, I thought you had a plan, or we we as artists or DJs or whatever we think, oh, I thought they had the plan. That's how we came up. Like, just like, yeah. my story's kind of similar, but it's just working at the radio station, mm-hmm. which I realized I don't need that to be who I am and do what I do, which is a whole nother topic and everything. But what I'm saying is, you took that L from like, those people that, that you did, oh yeah, no, nah, they do be having that for you, but they take 10%. 15%, yeah, yeah. 30%, 15% to the point where that's why these artists that did that and sometimes are in debt, they got to keep performing these songs because that's what, they're not in the 360 though. Mm-hmm. So they get this show money to stay alive. So that's like minimum wage money for a celebrity. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? We got somebody like yourself now, he done built this up to the point where he his own machine. It might not be as big as Microsoft or, you, you know, Interscope and all of that, but it's still his own machine that he's getting 100% from, which yeah. is 100% is better than... <laughs> 10% of a million dollars, basically. It's yeah, about the same. Nah, nah. Like, and that's, you know what, what I mean? that's what it made me but realize. But you own your like, own. And then, anything I yeah. step into. Like, damn, I made y'all all this money and this is all I take? Yeah, yeah. It's it's like, it's, it's it's a true test. That's how I feel about too. going to a 95. Like, so you telling me I'm loading this pallet just worth 20000 and I'm only getting paid Fifteen dollars mm-hmm. an hour to build this one pallet, but this one pallet about to sell for twenty exactly. to fifty thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, yeah. And I'm only getting ten dollars. Yeah. Fifteen dollars. Yeah. Nah, that's the same thing. I'm only getting six hundred dollars at the end of the week for putting in forty dollars. Like exactly. if you come to a record label, trying to tell everybody the business is the same. Yeah. And everything if you, you come do. to them and you, like you said, your album, your brand, you built, you have, you did the work and built what's on that pallet. But what the label is like Amazon say you got yeah. you you the one who loaded this one pallet that's worth fifty rack, but they the ones that got the truck. They got the they brought everybody else in they got to the load that truck to they get got that the truck brands. from point A to point B and then get it to the customer. Mm-hmm. So it's like here's your five thousand, sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah, be happy Pretty with what? that. You know, you mad? Cause you know I can replace you tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I thought you said something. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought nigga said he didn't want his bad percent said something. Yeah, and that's like, what it, that's what it showed me too. Like yeah. the more the more I could do and build my value now, like yeah, I could sit down and talk to somebody, and it's like now nah, I built my value up to where, and they and people could see that if you've done a lot of work yourself, you are you know any somebody with money is just like the same thing as getting a loan. Like if I want that four hundred thousand dollar loan. I gotta have a certain amount in the bank, and they gotta see that I've leveraged enough credit that makes me responsible enough to handle that amount of money. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's like that's how I be looking at this. Like anybody who come to me can already see that I've taken and assumed a certain amount of risk on my own mm-hmm. and been willing to bet on myself. You know what I mean? Yeah, whether, sure. whether I take an L. It's like I've taken that risk on. You really got to be a stand-up you know I mean? guy in certain situations, man, to, to get to the next level. Like I learned that in my own personal experiences of fucking up so much that you just got to hold yourself accountable when you're fucking up True. in order to grow into the person that you need to be. Like if you're going to keep fucking up and damn blaming somebody else because you fucked up, yeah. then you ain't going to grow. But if you fuck up and say, yo, let me look in the mirror and hold myself accountable and see how I can fix what I've been fucking up all the time and, yeah. and, and regroup and fucking come back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, yeah. I think my my son, my, my my son did that for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? He, like, cause I just had so much downtime to just chill. I just had a lot of time to think about a lot of shit that I could fix, a lot of the relationships that I had, where they was going and some that I could replace and like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was, I was, I was, I finally looked at my car as I was done. Yeah. Cause right. Cause now I'm living, I ain't surviving no more. I got the, I got there the basics go. down. I got the fucking intermediate shit that I needed about life that I didn't know at first. I yeah. rebuild myself. So now yeah. I'm starting to yeah. got down, play yeah. my cars is the way that uh, it's starting to play them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Based tough. off the resources and the people that I know and the things that I am doing. And that's how I've been moving. I'm um, accordingly man. And, and shit been working for me. Um, in my purpose, you know what I'm saying? So, 
I definitely don't understand. Need reset button though. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So you, you said resell? Reset button. Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what you want to like, <laughs> yeah, put them on the market. Right there. It's gonna reset your mind, recalibrate yourself. Yeah, for sure. Get it together because I'm like, perfect. damn, I'm a dad all over again. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I mean, I'm just talking about even the first one. Like, it's like you each one it resets you again. Because mm-hmm. like now, I was used to doing everything for this one child. And you know, like, and I mean, that made me do it in perspective. When I first had my first son, I, I took a break from music for like a year, mm-hmm. which was like a, a gift and a curse. Mm-hmm. I learned more about myself when me and my son built an unbreakable bond to this day. But what it did was also remind me, like at that time, I was that cocky and full of myself that I thought that everything else was gonna wait for me mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. that year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, nah. don't, it did not care. Yeah. But in that time, like, it's like almost like going away. Like, it's like that, remind me that, uh, remember the wire? When mm-hmm. Avon came back, I mean, not Avon, um, Marlo came back to the streets and he thinking he's still that dude. They're like, nigga, nigga, tried him. As soon as he came out there, like, he's like, whoa, like, you don't know who I am? Like, I don't care who you are. <laughs> what? For real. I mean, because that's life. Don't nobody yeah. care. As soon as you stop doing something, you have to rebuild yourself again. Or not even yeah. if you stop. Like, like if, you, if you if you get if you get too much money, man, and you start bragging and boasting and, and all your people around you broke and hurting, they're gonna look at you like, nigga, what the fuck you think this you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, exactly. Like yeah. you gotta stay humble, so stay down. You gotta stay hungry and, and, yeah. that, and that's that's just what like one thing I've I've learned about life. I can't say everybody needs that lesson because but everybody takes a humbling a humbling uh rice crispy treat. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, um, so Noah, man, what what all this new refinement and things that you've learned? Tell us, like, what do you want out of the music game, other than the following, the genuine following? Man, what do I? I just for real, at the end of the day, I got into this to to inspire people. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Inspire and provide for the people around me. But yeah, hopefully, you know, inspire people by my story, the things I'm saying, and I'm mm-hmm. showing people that anything. That you that you imagine or you can dream up, like you can you can manifest it and make it real. You mm-hmm. know, like uh, my life, my career is like that's what I look at it as. It's a testament to like I can make. I've gotten exactly what so far what I put into it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like the stories I'm telling the, when people when people look at my brand. You know, when I say my brand, not just articles of clothing, but like when my name come up and and. My, my, the products themselves, like you know, I just want to show people it's real. Mm-hmm. Like you, you can get what you what you want out of it. It take a lot of hard work, you know mm-hmm. what I mean, and a lot of you know lessons along the way. You know, losing money, making money, but I, that's what I want to uh, you know, if anything, leave people with, and hopefully, yeah, continue to uh, su- be successful, take care of the people around me, mm-hmm. open businesses, things like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so ha- have it been any any independent artist in Richmond or Cali that's inspired you, that you haven't worked with, that you want to work with? I mean, Even on clothes or or like music? Oh, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of brands and things like like shout out to FYBV, shout out to BZ. That's that's a brand. Shout out to Bob Bless, you know Mac Mac Vision. Mm-hmm. Definitely inspired by what they're doing. Shout out to Rotate, Chilele. You know, just everybody was doing their thing. These Trap Tastic, um, my dude, a driver made in Norfolk, down in Norfolk. That's on the clothing side. But as far as like, you know, like as far as like artists, like. There's a, there's a other artists, like I said, like Nipsey Hussle is definitely somebody inspired me, Master mm-hmm. P, things like that. Um, yeah, people like that, E40, like I that's somebody, you. you know what I mean? Yeah, like, for sure. I love to sit down with somebody like E40 or Master P, just chop it up with them, Ice Cube, like these are all people that have taken it further than music, you know, those are the guys, you know, Jay-Z, well, I mean, as far as like other artists. There's um, a lot of dope people, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. So, man, is there anybody that you want to sh- give a shout out to or, like, you know what I'm saying? Bless, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Shout out to uh, producer Sutter Holmes, that's who's producing. Um, Sutter, Chil- what's up, man? Chilipino, you know? Just everybody who's involved in the process, like, just appreciate y'all. But really, Sutter right now. And then I'm just so focused on the work, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, y'all want to tap in, tap in with me. Charged up, Noah O, Charged up ENT on YouTube, charged up ENT.com. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir.
Yes, sir. What's up, Banger Man? What you got for us, man? What man. you got for our clothes in regards to the people, man? I mean, just be on the lookout for our next podcast, man. Next in line, we taking over the world. And uh, y'all yeah, know I'm about to get off the, off the air real quick. We'll get these bars from no oak. We'll get y'all something separate. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Another time, you know. And uh, if y'all just stay tuned to everything we got going on, man. Tap on my board, grab Let's go. And, you know, let's get it. Hey, man. Um, so I know this is our first podcast. But to our supporters collectively, that y'all know us before the podcast or whatever we had going on, just want to thank you for your time. Um, no, I want to thank you for taking time out your yeah, day to stop sure. by, sure. drive by the, the studio, man, and give us an interview at some last minute type shit. Like, we've been promoting the podcast for like two, three months, and I I was just like, yo, you want to be the first first episode? You know what I'm saying? Let's go. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We got some more special guests. We're going to keep bringing special guests in for y'all. Oh, yeah. um, independent artists. Clothing brands, entrepreneurs, health fanatics, um, OnlyFans. Like, we trying to reach, bro. We trying to get whatever. You know what I'm saying? Let's have some conversations. Let's build genuinely and let's grow with each other, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, next in line of podcast, this is Graphic Films, DJ Banger, Charged Up No. Charged Up. Charged Up No. Oh. Yeah. We signing out. Yeah, Peace. Peace.